Hello, this is Roland. Today I'd like to talk to you about the consolations of God. And I'll begin by reading you something from, um, from The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis. It's actually book two of his very wonderful book called The Interior Life, first chapter. It's actually book two, the first chapter. He's talking about meditation. The kingdom of God is within you, says the Lord. Then turn to God with all your heart. Forsake this wretched world and your soul shall find rest. Learn to despise external things to devote yourself to those that are within. And you will see the kingdom of God come unto you. The kingdom which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Gifts not given to the impious. Christ will come to you offering his consolation if you prepare a fit dwelling place for him in your heart. Isn't that beautiful? And then I want to read you um, here from a little further on. But if you refuse external consolation, you will be able to contemplate heavenly things and often to experience internal or interior joy. That's very beautiful. You see, we have a tendency to look for consolation from the outside, don't we? As soon as you do something that's not quite right, you know in your heart. You know in your heart when you were impatient with your kids or you were a little bit terse with someone or um, you were rude to someone or you said something that wasn't true to someone. You know it, don't you? You know it in your heart. But you try to deny the truth. And how do you deny the truth? By seeking external consolation. First of all, from the person that you that you wronged. It'd be much better to go to the person and say, I was um, I was impatient or I was resentful. And uh, I'm sorry, I apologize. That would be beautiful. Because you're telling the truth and and you're clearing the air. But instead, what do, what do we do? Well, you go to them and you try to do something nice to them, or you say something nice to them, or you try to sweep it under the carpet, see, or you make an excuse for yourself. Well, if I was a little impatient, it was, I've had a rough day and uh, a lot of things have been happening late. I got a lot on my plate. So you try to make an excuse for yourself, see. Try to change the subject. A lot of parents are mean, mean, or even cruel to their little children. And then when they see the little child crying, or worse yet, when the child is ready to go to school, and his face, his eyes are all red from crying, then the parent becomes afraid that uh, someone will see and start asking questions. So then the parent tries to be extra nice. Oh, here's an extra couple of dollars. Buy yourself some candy on the way home and. Try, you know, or tries to change the subject, and little children are very forgiving. See, so that's what we do. We seek consolation by by seeking the other person to say, "Oh, that's okay." What what you're doing is you're um, you're seeking consolation from them instead of getting consolation from God. Okay. Well, and what? How else do we seek consolation? Well, we seek it by going to our friends. See, you have a fight with your husband. Then what do you do? You go, to, you go to your friends. Oh, Bill was so mean and so cruel, and he does this and he does that, and I've tried so hard, and all I do is try and do the best I can. And, and your friend is there to ask, yes, you're right. Your husband is no good. See, you seek solace from them to make you feel okay about yourself. See? Um, and how else do we seek consolation? Well, we seek consolation in our, in our daydreams that cater to us. Our thoughts tell us that we're okay, the other person is no good, we couldn't help ourselves, blah, blah, blah. See? Consolation from some netherworld presence spinning consoling but dark idea, uh, notions in your mind. Or we seek consolation from, um, from distraction, from shopping, from food, we seek the consolation of food 
to comfort us, make us feel okay about the way we are. Or we seek consolation from alcohol, or from marijuana, or from pills, or from music. See, you can you can be mean to you can be rude to people. Sne have sneaky judgments of them, be impatient with your kids, be phony, and then music s serenades you as if you were a wonderful person. So those are the consolations that people see seek on the outside. But you know what? If you seek those consolations, then you won't receive consolation from God. How much better it is to receive consolation from God? Christ said, I think it was right after the Lord's Prayer. I think if you look for the Lord's Prayer, probably in Matthew, I'm not sure, but you look for the Lord's Prayer, and right after the Lord's Prayer, Christ said, for well, if you forgive others, then your Heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, your Heavenly Father won't forgive you. Okay? So, wouldn't it be much better to be forgiven by God? So how do you so then if you do a wrong to someone, then what do you do? If you can, you clear the air, not to make yourself feel better, not to give yourself a good image, but simply to do what's right and to clear the air. I'm sorry. I was uh, I was phony with you. I apologize. And then to he, and then leave. Don't ask for their forgiveness. That's a big mistake. Only God forgives. It is God's prerogative to judge and to forgive. You can't forgive others, and they can't forgive you. They can let go of their grudge against you. They can let go of their resentment. See, they can let it go. That's okay. But don't ask them to forgive you. Oh, can you ever forgive me? What you're doing is you're asking them to play God. If they forgive you, then they're, then A, they may become resentful because they see it's another pressure upon them. Or B, they, they feel wrong about it and, and it, 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 it's not good. Or they puff up. Their ego puffs up and forgives you. But then that's not good for them at all. So simply clear the air. I was wrong, I apologized. If you're impatient with your child, say, I was I was impatient. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I was wrong. It's that simple. And then go about your business. Don't hang around lingering as wanting something from don't want anything from them. But then you're you're what you're what you do in secret, in other words, the the regret that you have when you see the truth about yourself in secret, then your Heavenly Father rewards you in secret. He forgives you. Then you go and you clear the air, see? And you receive God's consolation. See, God has some wonderful consolations, okay? Christ said, didn't he say in the Sermon on the Mount, you know, blessed are you, or a heavenly attitude is yours, or a heavenly state, when others revile you or per persecute you for righteousness sake. See, uh, if, you, if you speak up about something because it's right to speak up, okay? If you do that, then everyone's going to withdraw their approval. The person you're speaking up to will withdraw their approval. Other people are probably going to go, oh, how can you say that? And they'll rush to the defense of the person that you're speaking up to. Everyone will make you feel like you're you're wrong for telling the truth. That's why whistleblowers are always persecuted. Well, you just speak the truth. Don't, regardless of the car, you just, you just, the truth comes out. And then you leave. See? You're not resentful. You're not angry. You just told the truth. Okay? It's like the remember the beautiful was it Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale about the emperor's new clothes? Remember, where the the emperor was totally bamboozled by some smooth-talking charlatan, some used car salesman or makeup salesman or something that that was very clever, and he taught he uh, he made it, it he 
he he said he had some clothes that would make the king look great, but they were they weren't clothes at all. So then the king was walking down the center of the street in a parade with in his underwear. And everyone looked and said, oh, aren't those nice clothes? But one little kid said, the emperor doesn't have anything on. And everybody went, oh, how can you say that? So, you see? But then God will console, God will console you. See? So God's consolations are peace of mind, forgiveness, joy. See? Beautiful, sweet. That's the kingdom of heaven, those consolations. A right relationship with God is the most wonderful thing, okay? And God consoles you. So if you don't get consolation from the world, be great, be glad you don't. See, just be careful that you don't, you're not resentful over it. Be careful that you're not, and be careful that you're not um, being mean to other people so that they reject you and then you can say, poor me, I'm the victim. Nobody likes me, see? So watch watch out for that, for your ego. See, you may do something for the right reason. You speak up for the right reason, just spontaneously. But then afterwards, your ego tries to come along and take credit for it. So watch, so watch that. If that happens, just watch it. Just see it, that's all. That's all. Well, I think I've made uh, a nice little video. Let me finish up by reading again just um, a little something from... Um, the Interior Life. This is book two from Thomas Akempis, The Imitation of Christ. The kingdom of God is within you, says the Lord. That's a, it's a Bible verse that he's quoting. He says, turn then to God with all your heart. Forsake these re this wretched world and your soul shall find rest. Learn to despise external things, to devote yourself to those that are within and you will see the kingdom of God come unto you. The kingdom which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Gifts not given to the impious. Christ will come to you offering his consolation if you prepare a fit dwelling for him in your heart. Well, those are very beautiful words. So I think maybe we'll just uh, we'll stop with, with that.